So I want to show you how to make a market update video. I'm going to walk you through my process step by step, showing you the exact tools, everything that I use that I do once a month and even the time frame, all of it. So let's jump in and let me show you what, what we do with the very first step. I, I like to work on the local stats first. So I go to my local monthly stats, which are in my MLS, okay, in Matrix. We use Matrix. I, I'm in two associations, right? I'm in Nevada and in Florida. That's right. Both the local association and the state association in Florida. Between all of that, I find all the stats that I need for the previous month. I'm reporting monthly stats for the previous month. Now, what I just did recently, since we're now into January 2022, can't get January stats until February. So when you, what you do in January, and it's a, if you've never done this before, it's a perfect place to start because what you can do is get not only the, the stats for December, you could do, and this is what I just did, you can do an analysis of what of some key things that happened in 2021 for your first market update video. So it's pretty cool because you have to wait till February to get the January stats. Then you can continue on with some things I'm going to show you today. Now, if you're watching on, over at YouTube or on our video, there's a screenshot here of the housing snapshot. This isn't a report that the Las Vegas Realtors does. I have the same thing for Florida Realtors, which is the key stats that I want. This is really all I want in here. And what's in here is for single family and condos. You can decide if you're going to report on both. I like to focus on single family. This year, I'm going to also talk about condos because I feel like they've become the new affordable home. Absolutely. Okay? So I have things like units sold and then the median sales price. And then there's always, how is that compared to year over year or month over month? So the stats I get say, for example, 3,178 homes were sold single family in the Las Vegas area. Uh, 425,000 was the median sales price in December. And that is literally up like 23%. It's nuts. So I get that. What are the new listings and the month supply and the available uh, inventory for that month? Those are the things I report on. Because I like that. That's what I think is easy to, to cover. Now, the other thing that I do on step one is uh, we're, we're adding this. This is not something that I did last year in Vegas. I have been doing it in Florida. I use the MLS stats. I think in every MLS, you can simply go in and pull up like a city. So maybe in our team in Vegas, we have people who specialize in Summerlin, Master Plan, Pahrump, which is a city. And you can pull the stats up for the month or the year, whatever time frame. And there's always a little stats figure. Uh, I've seen it in every MLS I've ever looked at that lets you create a cool graph or a chart yeah. for it. There, It's so easy to get the stats, guys. If you're like, I don't know how to do all that, I'm telling you, go talk to your broker, call your MLS, call your association, and go take a class on this. And you'll be like, holy crap, I didn't know all these stats were available for me. That's step one, get that process down and then have it as a routine. I do this on the 10th or 11th of the month. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, you generally need the 10th to the 15th because your association may take the first two weeks to be able to put out the stats for the previous month. Okay. Right. All right. So that's number one, get your local stats. Number two, we created a, a uh, graph in not a graph, it's actually just a, a Google sheet. You could use Excel, which then the data can turn into a graph. And so in number two, one of the things you want to do, because it's so cool to, to do this, is to start tracking from January right now, all the way through the year, every month, what's the median sales price for your area? What's the median sales price maybe for single family and for condos? And then what you can do is easily graph it and start comparing that month over a month. So what's really cool for the, the video I did this month is I have the whole tracking for month over month comparisons. Actually, I could add that uh, to say how much more that is up. That's actually something I should do. I didn't think about that. But it's a story enough to say in Vegas, for example, we went from a 325 median sales price in January I think it's 345 actually. 345 to 425 in December. That is an $80,000 equity gain, a home price appreciation gain on median average the average homeowner had that much gain. 
it's crazy. That's why this is so important to get so important to get this information out right now because the story is so freaking good, right? So if you're going to be doing this consistently at some point, this is going to start going the other direction, which is still a story, right? But oh my god, right now it's phenomenal. So you know, you might be able to figure out uh, in in Excel or Sheets how to label everything, but what we do is we take it the the screenshot of the graph that you create from the the table that you set up. Right. And right now it's just median sales price. That's the only thing I really want to track. And then we grab it and go put it into Canva. Matt's going to show you how to do that. He'll show you how to uh, separately, how to create the graphics that, that go with this. Okay. Yeah. So, and we do that. We do it that way because it just makes the visual look better when you're actually putting your presentation together. You it does, can you have do some more availability yeah. with things that you can do. And then you can exactly. just keep building on it each month. A little more so flexibility. Right. He'll show you that. All right. So that's number two. Now, number three is keeping current matters. This is the secret sauce Always. for my videos. You, you could stop right there, just do a local market update. But if you really want to take your market update to the next level, get the Keeping Current Matters subscription. You can get, you can get a 14-day free trial. We have a little link if you uh, sign up through our affiliate link. We basically get a month free. You get a gift card for 25 bucks. That's one of the things they do. That's it is the card. best investment you're going to make. In addition to blog posts and social media infographics and all these other things that you can do for your business, the powerful thing is the monthly market update that David Childers does. I watch it. It comes out on the 10th of every month. I watch it. I grab the slides that I want to use. I don't use all the slides. I grab the slides that I think tell the story I want to say. The other thing that's so brilliant is you can watch that video, take your notes. You can download the transcript. You can take the audio file and listen to it so you're comfortable saying what he's doing is he's doing a market update to us, the professionals to say, here's what your clients need to know. Here's what you should be telling people. Here's what's happening with trends and forecasts. Here's what all the experts are saying about what's happening with house prices, appreciation this year, interest rates, what's happening with foreclosures. You get all that data and you get the cool charts that you can download and put into your presentation. That's step three. That's what I do next. And then cool, I go to yeah. step four. And in step four, what I do is update the uh, market, the slide deck that we created in Canva, that Matt created in Canva for me. And I've been using it for a year. Yeah. And it is, uh, all, it, all we do is just put the new images in. There's a flow to it. There's an intro slide. There is, I always like to say, here's what I'm going to cover. It helps me when I go do the recording. Here's my topics for today for this. Welcome back to the monthly market update for January. I don't introduce myself right away. In a video, you want to put the hook in. This is what we're going to cover in this video. Stay and watch. And I'm going to tell you about mortgage interest rates and what's happening and what kind of market we're in and give you the local stats. And then, hi, it's me. And this is who I am. Then I do the presentation. And uh, uh, that's how the thing is set up. And then there's a call to action at the end. Okay, so you create your slide deck one time. And every month, all you do is swap out the slides. That takes me about 15 minutes. Then I'm on to number five. Now I've got everything ready. I also have to put in there. Matt's going to show you how to do all that um, separately. So you, you, the slides are easy to create and drag and drop the images. And then you're ready to rock and roll. But I do need to put those couple local. I put the local graphs in. And then also the ones I get from the national housing from Keeping Current Matters. Then I use Loom. L-O-O-M. If you don't use this already. Oh, my God. You are missing out. If you are a Google Chrome user, it's a free extension. If you're going to use it a lot, you'll have to pay for it. I think it lets you have about uh, 10 videos or something. Yeah, maybe not too many if you're going to be doing these on a frequent basis. Yeah. So if you're going to do it all the time, it's not that expensive. It may cost you like, I don't know, $90 a year or something. Well worth it. And then what happens is the video is actually stored inside of there but you're, you're going to need to put it on YouTube anyway. But what it allows you to do is record your screen, record you like a little circle. There's three sizes of the circle that have you, you can move your little image with your circle anywhere you want. I basically go into Canva, turn the loom. There's a little icon that goes up in your Chrome. It turns it on. You make sure the settings are right and you record yourself. When you're done with that, then you go on to number six. So I just record my slide deck. I practice it. I know what I'm going to say. Step six is edit the video. Now, I generally need to edit the beginning. I've been doing so many videos. The beautiful thing about this is if you screw up, start over. 
you don't yeah. want to edit it, right? We're talking about maybe an eight to 10 minute video if you do it like I do. Um, but I always have to cut off the first 10, 20 seconds because it's me setting up loom, moving my picture out of the way, collapsing down a couple things, getting it the way I like, and then starting. Now, what's cool in loom, they added a simple trimming tool. You don't have to do any kind of crazy editing. It's so easy. You hit the, you hit the little scissors. It pulls up this editing thing. You can slide it to where you begin, and then you sh save it. Voila, you have a a video ready to rock and roll and go on YouTube. Now, if you're really into editing, you can download it in the video and go put it into another editor and do whatever you want to it or have somebody else do that for you if you're trying to make it look cooler. Frankly, I think it's perfect the way it is. Then number seven, you, you take that final edited video and you put it on YouTube. You need a YouTube channel. This is one of the pieces of content that you can consistently do that will start helping you build out your YouTube channel. Plus you need the it to be housed somewhere and you might as well house it on YouTube where people can find you because we're going to do some other things with the link. So don't forget in YouTube, you've got to make sure you have a cool title. My title always is going to say Las Vegas real estate market report or real estate report January, 2022. It's got to make sure you have the date, the month and the date and lead with your city. Keep that consistent. Put your description in there. I kind of put some of the, the same content I'm going to put in my newsletter in there, that the stats are in there, and uh, I put all the right tags in. That's your SEO little bonus tip so people can find it. And then number eight, write a blog post with your video and the monthly stats. I basically get all this content from the articles that the associations publish every month, recaps of the stats, put my own spin on it. Now I have a blog post and you might say, why are you creating a blog post or a page on your website that has all this data? I'm going to tell you why. And that's in number nine. Now in number nine, you're going to, you're going to get that blog post done because I'll come back to that. And in number nine, you're going to create your monthly newsletter um, with all the content. Now, now you've recorded your video, you, I, we're not going to go through how to do a newsletter here because guess what? We have a video on how to create a newsletter from the, the newsletter that we're kind of showing you right here. Go right over there. We'll put a little link to it at the top here. Yeah, right on. So that is Matt and I walking you through completely how we do this newsletter in, in our CRM. Um, you could use MailChimp or Constant Contact. And then you're going to send it out to your completely to your database. I'm going to share this really quick, Matt. Matt, um, Can you pop, that, uh, can you pop yep. that one up and let's just scroll through that. And I have it. Um, so I, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, I'm just scrolling through the whole newsletter just so you could, we had a little bit of a screenshot. So it has a header. It Right at the top, it's where the video thumbnail is for people to click, the stats, the charts that I want to pull out. We, we do a lot of YouTube video in Vegas, so we spotlight a couple of other videos. And then I might you know have another infographic or something in here or an article of interest. And 100% all of that comes from other places. Okay. Not, I mean, it's like keeping current matters, blog posts or something interesting that was in there. Now, what I am committed to doing moving forward in the new year, Matt, especially here in, in Florida where I'm living is to do the newsletter to add a local business spotlight. Smart. Okay? Now I'm, I'm, we're not showing you how to create that newsletter. Go watch that other video, but this newsletter I'm spending a second on it is the key to everything. If a newsletter is local, has your information in it, a video or two that you're doing, this market update, talking to people about what's happening in your area, and you send it out consistently, it really helps you become that local market expert. It's huge, okay? So now you're going to send your newsletter out. Now we're on to number 10, two more steps. Two, three days later, what I want you to do is grab the link to your blog post, or if you created a page where you kind of reproduced everything you put in your newsletter online somewhere. Um, now, if you use something like MailChimp, it creates an archive and a little link that you could actually send people to. But the whole point is not everybody opens up their email. That's right. And what I find is when we, uh, we have used MailChimp, we have used every CRM known to real estate, <laughs> um, no matter how good you are, how good the CRM is, stuff goes to people's spam. And then everybody reads their email. I mean, Matt, on our newsletter at WBNL, what, what kind of open rates do we get? I mean, uh, well, up, up to 33% actually. Very high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 20% at 50? No, 25 to 33. We have a few 33s just recently. So Wow. Okay. Yeah. That is off the charts. You're lucky if you can get 10 or 15% of people to open your, your email. 
So this is what you do. You, if you take that extra step that I mentioned a minute ago, or a couple steps back, now you send the newsletter. Now you get a, now to be able to do this, you need a CRM that allows you to do group text. Otherwise, this will take you forever. So this step is for you CRM users that have the mass texting availability, which a majority of the really good CRMs have this. Everything from LionDesk to uh, KB Core we used to use has it, to the one we're using now uh, in, in Vegas, uh, Go High Level, which I really like it, um, is great. So anyway, you basically go, hey, everybody, in case you missed the newsletter, I emailed, here's a copy of it. Here, Click to go get the market update for January 2022 and everything else, whatever. A quick one-time email, I mean text, that you send out. People may more likely click on that. Now they're driving to your website. Why I think it should be on your website is you're driving people back to your website where maybe there's other information about what their home is worth or whatever else you want to share. And that's what you do. And then the last tip here, and all of this is creating a ton of content for you. If you just do this one thing, this market update, you created a newsletter. Yes, you got to get some more content other than just the market update. Now you're sending a text and you're connecting with your people monthly. Everybody in your database that has a cell, you need to send the text to them. And then you have content to put on social media. You could post the video on whatever your other social channels are. You could break the things down that are in your newsletter, I mean, in your slide deck, and just pick one chart out. You could have seven to 10 days of content every month just because you do this extra step. Take it a step further and do a couple one minute videos. Those could be in reels on Instagram or That's Facebook right. or do a live or whatever. And you're just going to say, I'm just going to talk about interest rates because I always have stuff about interest rates, uh, national stats. You could just take what's happening in your area. You could take a city that you're focusing on and just have the stats for that. You have so much content just by doing this one thing. So you know, it's funny because we've been, we said our, our uh, motto for 2022 is going to be keep it simple, right? Do, you know, really hone it down and, and, and focus. This is the perfect thing because if you, not only are you becoming the local real estate market expert, right? Because you know the stats in the area and all the areas that you're working in. Um, but you can do, like Jan just said, you can do one thing and turn it into a plethora of the different things that you can put all over the place. So it is an awesome. I mean, I love it, right? I mean, this Absolutely. is one simple strategy to follow like clockwork schedule it for to do it by the 15th of every month as soon as the materials come available and knock it out that's always my goal get it done by the 15th because here's and the deal it's also information that people want for crying out loud yes. this is this is stuff they really want to pay attention to. put it in your calendar get it done check the show notes out we've got uh, a link to our show notes where uh, below below the video here or if you're listening go to our show notes over at wbnlcoaching.com Go to the podcast or go to WBNL podcast and step by step, all that stuff is up there for you. Okay. Yeah, good stuff, Jennifer. Awesome. I just do it. Can you just do it? Trust me on this. <laughs> just do it. Can't make, you know, it's easier said than done, I know, but just make a commitment that you're going to do a newsletter and a market update. We, we've just shown you today how to do the market update. Watch our other video to how to do a newsletter and make it happen. Let Sweet. this be the year that you have a newsletter.